Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is another video on this grey Mustang that we're working on. Which, um, you know, we've got a, there's another video on a bunch of other stuff we're doing to it. But what this video about today is this flaming river steering rack conversion that it's got on it. And uh, I've never been a fan of them, uh, mainly because of how uh, tight it makes the steering. Uh, you know, it has tight spots. Uh, but what's become apparent on this car is what I've realised is just how much bump steer they have. And it's quite staggering. And yeah, I'm not going to make any friends of Flaming River, but really this, it shouldn't even be on the market, this car, in all honesty. Like, uh, there's other countries where they measure your bump steer, and you know, this wouldn't, wouldn't sort of pass the, the MOT or the COF or you know, safety inspection. Uh, because the bump steer is so dramatic and I want to show you that what I'm going to do first is like we just drove this in here the wheels are pointing pretty much the same direction uh, so and I just wanted to demonstrate that using the old trusty four foot ruler now I'm not saying this is how you do a wheel alignment I'm just trying to get, show you when you look at this gap here this is pretty well parallel with the side of the body all right I don't want you to think I'm fudging it for the camera, because I'm really not. It, I don't need to. This is woeful. <laughs> um, and we do the same here. And, back. and if you look down there, it's pretty parallel with the body. You know, the car runs down the road, and, you know, the wheels are pointing both the same direction, both forwards. So uh, let's get it on the rack, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to hit the button and go up. Uh, keep an eye on this wheel and you'll see how much it turns. Did you see that? How much that towed in? Like, that shouldn't happen. As your suspension goes up and down, you're going to get some toe in and toe out. It kind of bumps here. And there is, a, there is a, a level that's tolerable and kind of unavoidable. Um, but, unavoidable. Right, so if you look Come back here, Steve, and look down the side of the car. You can see it's very easy to see that wheel's pointing in. I mean, pointing the left hand wheel is pointing to the right, and if you pan over to the right hand wheel, it's pointing to the left. And we're not talking about a little bit, we're just not talking about a little bit. What I want to do is grab the tape measure, and we're going to measure the difference between the back and the front of the wheel. And now keep in mind that these measurements should be ideally within half an inch or less i mean when you set your toe and toe out you set it like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch toe in or toe out depending on the vehicle uh, you know and and bump steer through the travel half an inch is acceptable uh, but beyond that it starts to make the car evil handling and trust me this car is evil handling uh, so let me get some light and uh, we'll be back in a second okay so we're going to give it the good old redneck uh wheel alignment check, well, not a wheel alignment, we're just going to see, uh, this is a little rough and ready, but uh, you'll get the idea, uh, that hooked on the inside tree groove to inside tree groove, uh, that comes out at 53 and 3 quarter inches, so really you'd want the front to be within half an inch either side of that, so let's, let's see what we got here. Go as close to the centre as you can. And we have about 48 and a half. Now, by my math, it's 53 and three quarter. Yeah, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five and a quarter inch difference. Like, toe, what's the toe in here? Yeah, five and three quarter inches toe in. That's just shameful. Like that, that it makes the car undrivable. And the real, the issues are, um, this is your lower arm. That's your suspension, right? And your tie rods, which are these, 
are supposed to run at about the same plane as your lower arm. You know, about the same. So they kind of pivot. And they're also meant to be, meant to be, about the same length. Now you can see that, that ball joint, line joint, is kind of more or less in line with that. Ish, you know. This tie rod end is well, you know, there's a big difference here. It's probably a good uh, four inches. This is longer. So what happens is it goes through a different radius, all right? The radius changes and, and shortens and lengthens at a different rate. Uh, and also, you know, the angle, this, this should be a similar angle to this arm. And it's not, it's not even close. Yeah, that's sort of there and, yeah. So the whole design of this is just bad. And it's never gonna work. It, it, I'm, I'm really kind of shocked that Flaming River, you know, market. Uh, they really shouldn't. They should just be giving people their money, back, in my opinion. Uh, and it's, it's frustrating because Flaming River do make some nice stuff. They do some really nice gear. They do beautiful steering columns, and steering hub adapters, and steering U joints. They do a lot of nice stuff. Um, someone was having a really bad Friday when they designed it. Uh, and then you know you've, got, you've also got the tight spots, which are in this universal. There's the universal up in here that is on way too much of an angle and you know a U-joint will only turn through so many degrees and once you get past that it starts to bind and the U-joints in the steering bind so you get this every time you turn the wheel it goes a little bit tighter and then loosens up and tighter and loosens up every half turn it just makes it unpleasant to drive so the only fix is just basically to bin all this stuff which is what we've had to go ahead from the customer um, they don't like the way it drives we're going to throw, take it all out, throw it all away, uh, put in a Borgeson, go back to the stock steering setup with the addition of a Borgeson power box, and uh, we'll come back and we'll road test it and show you what, what I think. And uh, but I tell you what, it, it's you know I, I remember having soapbox derby cars with string for steering. That was a better design than this. Anyway, that's my little rant. So hey. Uh, so here we are a couple of days later and all that horrible flaming river nonsense is gone uh, we've got all the stock suspension back in all the drag links the tire rods, everything's brand new these still got to be tightened up because we've got to finalize the wheel alignment um, well the wheel alignment guys will do that but yeah the balls and power steer box is up here um, so yeah, we uh, is looking like a, a, a regular Mustang now with the addition of a Borgeson power steer box. So um, let's throw that tape measure on it again and kind of see what we got. The wheels are pointing more or less the right direction. So uh, the tape measure. Now, if you remember earlier in the video when we did this, we hit over five inches. Let's just you know, get that as high as we can. And we got right on 51 and a quarter. And we'll get that on the right block. That is 50 and 3 eighths. So right now, it's got 3 eighths of an inch. In. Um, whereas before we went from straight ahead to five and five plus inches of towing so you can see the dramatic difference but like I was talking about with these uh, tie rods being in the wrong angle on that other system this arm is very close in, in the, the plane that it's on you know the, the tie rod and the lower arm are running about the same angle uh, the pivot points uh, like further in but they're on the same angle. And that's what controls most of your bump steer. Uh, and there's a few other little ge geometry things in there going on, but that's really the essential. Essentially, it is, these gotta be on the same angle. So I'm gonna drop it down. We'll do that same little view of the wheel. We'll see if we get much movement going on here as it's going up and down. Uh, but I know before we lifted it up, the wheels were straight ahead, so. And they're still basically straight ahead, whereas before they were just like towed in dramatically. So let's drop it on the ground and film that. 
So we're back on the ground. We're going to do that same little demonstration we did earlier in the video. We're just lifting it up and you can watch the wheel. Um, we've got the wheel pretty straight. Yeah, I say not wheel alignment accurate, but it's it's straight with that four foot ruler. So yeah, we're just going to pull it back up in the air and you guys see for yourself how much that wheel turns. <laughs> It did go in a little, um, but nothing like before. Um, so I would say on, on, on a, any production car, you're gonna get a little bit of bump steer. So I'm gonna call that a win. That is nothing like what we had before. None of that five inch, um, five inches plus of movement is, you know, BS. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna call that a win. We'll road test it, the car and, and make a judgment call on how it's driving once we get the rest of the bucket list polished off on this. But this was really just a video about this Flaming River power steer rack opinion conversion, as they call it. To me, it's more of a cock up than a conversion. But hey, that's just me. Uh, so yeah, have a good one, guys. Hope you got something out of this. I uh, hope you don't buy one of these kits. Uh, by the Borgeson like like you've just seen we put in so uh, have a good one see you on the next one